this content stars our viewers and readers in the video cards that you all bought. We charted the most popular video cards over the launch period for NVIDIA's RTX devices, as we were curious if GTX or RTX gained the most sales in this window. We've also got some AMD data toward the end, but the focus here is on a shifting momentum between Pascal and Turing architectures and what the consumers want. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake and the View 71 enclosure. The View 71 is a full tower case that's capable of fitting three video cards in most configurations. It's also one of the better cooling cases in our recent case testing bench lineup. The View 71 has hinged tempered glass doors on either side that make it easy to open and show off, and it comes with at least one rain fan, though you can get the RGB version if you prefer. Learn more at the link in the description below. So for this video, we're using referral sales data from our audience only to look at the popularity of GTX and RTX primarily with some AMD mixed in. The idea here is just looking back now, now that we've have had the perspective of launch, to see how the new cards perform, how the price proposition is, and we've had some time for GTX to slowly dwindle from supply, we can look back and see, do people really want card A versus card B? Where in this instance, that might be the 2080 versus the 1080 Ti, or the 2080 Ti versus the previous high-end flagship. Because the pricing now is so different, the way it's structured, with the 2080 Ti being over $1,200 in a lot of instances, it really pushes the market and moves the type of device that people purchase. So that's what we're looking at today. A couple of really important notes here. This sample size, although it's, it's pretty large, a couple hundred samples for our audience for this particular main set of charts, it's not representative of the whole. The inherent bias here will lean the, uh, the sales data toward whatever our audience buys. That does not mean it's representative of everyone. You can't take this data and extrapolate it to what maybe Linus Tech Tips audience buys or what the general Amazon consumer buys who doesn't even know we exist. So this is only for our audience. It's very much what do you all buy who are watching this on average. And that will typically skew a bit towards the high end as well. So we have a lot more data focused in that segment of the market where you're looking at 1080 Ti class, 2080, maybe 1070 Ti class, Vega 64, somewhere in there for pricing has been pretty popular for our audience. So that set of sample bias is very important to note. You can't extrapolate this market wide, but it's still very interesting data for what do hundreds of users in our viewer base and readership purchase when they're buying new graphics cards and video cards for their high end or otherwise uh, any gaming machine really, because we have some low end cards in there too. So let's walk through the data and see what it looks like for market distribution between the different types of NVIDIA and AMD devices. Using a sample size of several hundred purchases from our audience, we can plot this chart to look at popularity of cards between the 10 and 20 series. Note that, again, this isn't a perfectly representative distribution of all buyers, but it is for our audience. Most of our referred sales are in the US market, which means that this favors US market conditions and prices. Also, although several hundred samples is a pretty good amount, it's definitely not fully representative of the millions of video cards sold every year. This chart shows sales between the dates of August 20th and November 1st. August 20th is the day that the RTX 20 series was announced and put on pre-order, so we're not starting our data collection until the RTX series was made available. We can see that the GTX 1080 Ti distribution holds a significant lead at 65% of all sales to GN viewers. The next closest card is the RTX 2080 at 8%, which is followed by the GTX 1080 at about 8%, roughly and the 1070 Ti is nearing 5% after that. The 1070 Ti and 2070 are roughly equal in this distribution. Just to help visualize total market distribution, here's a pie chart for each device. The GTX 1080 Ti has been an immensely popular card and Nvidia deserves tremendous credit for making something that has held relevance all the way through now. It's highly popular, it's a good performer, and the price proposition is very strong. The 2080 performs about the same as the 1080 Ti, telling us that our audience has favored high-end GPU purchases over the last few months. So far, all this tells us is that the 1080 Ti sales far and away exceed everything else, at least for the past couple of months, but it doesn't tell us if there began a switchover period upon launch of the 20 series. We can use an over time chart for some of that. This is plotting only the GTX 1080 Ti for GTX and is not taking into account all of the other GTX cards. All RTX cards are plotted under one banner here. Overall, sales for our audience were slow, and people largely stopped buying GPUs leading up to the review embargo lift. Again, in our audience. 
the highest amount of RTX sales happened on day one of this plot, where the cards were announced, put on pre-order, but weren't yet reviewed. Again, remember that this data is inherently biased towards our audience and our content. We told people to hold purchases and wait to see our review, and it looks like the purchase trends followed that advice. Our content would bias the data toward either no purchases or GTX purchases primarily. So keep that in mind. Again, this isn't some massive market study. It's just our audience, and that's based on our content and the type of people who watch our content. Different audiences may have swung the other way. We don't know without other content creators talking about it. On date of review embargo lift, there's a massive spike in total NVIDIA sales for the GTX 1080 Ti. These percentages are based off of all GTX and RTX sales, not just the 1080 Ti and RTX, so this spike is substantial. Our review of the RTX 2080 came first and noted that it was not worth buying when compared to the 1080 Ti, which at the time was priced very well in the market. It was a bit cheaper than 2080s at launch day. This seemed to align with embargo lift day data that only GTX sold for at least, again, our audience. Our 2080 Ti review was next and noted that the 2080 Ti is objectively good, it's just expensive. Compared even to the RTX 2080, very few 2080 Ti's moved, and this is likely due to price. It was just a bit too much for even our high-end purchasing enthusiast audience. From this point on, most sales were GTX, numbering in the hundreds for all Pascal cards combined. We also don't yet know if this is standard behavior for a new architecture launch, and unfortunately, our readership was smaller when the GTX 1080 launched, so we still have enough data to make a basic chart, but we're working off far fewer samples, and that does mean that the data is more difficult to really draw conclusions from. Anyway, let's throw a chart up just to see what it looked like. In this chart, you're looking at the Pascal launch for the GTX 1080 and 1070 as compared to the 900 series. We saw similar behavior with the 900 series cards more popular for our audience of 2016. And remember, this is when we were largely drawing most of our readership via the website. We didn't have much of a YouTube presence just yet. That said, sample size is under 100 units, so we really can't draw too many conclusions here. The 10 series comprised of a total of 12% of all sales logged for the GTX 10 series launch window, measured over the same time period as the RTX versus GTX launch. The 970 remains the most popular card, true even today, where it has been one of the best-selling cards of all time. If you're curious about AMD sales during these time periods, here's a chart recalculated with those numbers. AMD's RX 580 shares the same popularity as the GTX 1080, and this is during the RTX launch window, so it's the same period as the first chart. The RX 580 is a bit more popular than the 1070 Ti, the 1070, and the 2070 in this two-month launch window. Remember, this is just that couple of months, so NVIDIA is driving the most marketing during this time. They're spending the most money on driving their product, putting it in front of people's eyes, and everyone's thinking about NVIDIA, so that will skew data towards NVIDIA purchases. The Vega cards were at roughly 2% sales during this period for 56 and 64 each. We really have to emphasize just how crazy the 1080 Ti sales are during this window. It's not like that year-round, but the timeline biases data, again, toward the high end, since most users were waiting to purchase RTX or the predecessor, and our audience seems to be largely enthusiast-aligned. That's all the data we have for you on this one. So, uh, like noted in the content, there's not a ton of data that we have from the 2016 launch window for the 10 series, because our viewership was much smaller at the time. We had more readers than viewers, and even that wasn't all that large. So that does mean that we have the most reliable data for the RTX launch, because we've got way more samples in the, in the uh, sample size that we selected. And that data does indicate a very strong presence for the 1080 Ti. So definitely, definitely kudos to NVIDIA for making a card that has survived time to an extent that it is even outmatching its own new devices for sales. And now this is true previously as well, even with the limited sample size we have, where it's limited to a point of being difficult to draw conclusions of for the 900 series versus the 10 series, unlike now where we have a lot more data to work with. For the 900 series versus 10 series, we saw a similar trend. It was largely 900 series purchases when the 10 series launched from our then much smaller audience. And that's probably partially normal. It's, it's not necessarily because RTX is universally disliked or something, uh, although the artifacting could play a part of the purchases, the uh, the lack of RTX features in games could absolutely play a part of purchases, but it's also because just the older generation is 
probably cheaper than it has ever been. It's probably readily available where the new generation always sells out within a couple months, most likely, maybe even the first week, depending on how popular it is. So these types of things influence purchasing decisions by buyers, of course. And it seems somewhat normal that the 10 series would exceed 20 series sales within the first two months of the 20 series existing. But at the same time, you have to look at it and really give credit. I mean, 1080 Ti at 65% of all of NVIDIA sales for that two month launch window of RTX is staggering. And the fact that the 1080 Ti is soon leaving the market because it's not being made anymore really is, is going to shift a lot of those buyers to the 2080 because they're not going to have anything else to buy in its place. Uh, so that's going to force the hand of people who want a high end device and won't be able to get a 1080 Ti unless they wait around or maybe they really jump up their spending to a 2080 Ti. And that, that price increase is just so large. And the 2080 Ti makes up very little of the total market share from our audience of video cards that it just seems more likely people will stick with 2080 non-Ti or down class to something else if they can't get something like a used card. And that's another good point is that our data does not include used card purchases and uh, also does not include purchases of anything from, I mean, just secondhand market in general. If it's in uh, from media market or uh, Saturn or any of those European based retailers, we don't have sales data for them. We are just looking at Amazon and Newegg primarily for our sales data. I think we have some Nvidia tracking as well, but it kind of, it's not quite as effective. So, uh, so the, the data is very much centered on US audience. We have some audience uh, sales data from UK buyers and German buyers, uh, but we don't have their specific regional retailers, which does limit the sample size a bit. So anyway, pretty interesting stuff. Nothing you can draw hard conclusions from, but we thought we'd share it with you because it does show a bit of the purchasing trend and, and out of hundreds of units to have more than half of them go to the 1080 Ti is really crazy. So uh, that's it for this one. Pretty simple content, really, just something a bit different and interesting. And as always, subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. We have, as of filming this, we have about 20 left, so they might be gone by the time it goes up. But you can pick up the shirt there if it's still there. It's limited. We're not going to make more. Uh, so this is one of the last chances you'll have to pick one up. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.